Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, I've got a ton of great emulation news. We're talking about Nintendo GameCube and Wii, Nintendo Switch, Nintendo 3DS, a lot of Nintendos, PlayStation 3, LaunchBox, as well as Linus Tech Tips. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about GameCube and Wii emulation on PC with Dolphin. Now, Dolphin has just dropped their progress report from May and June. The development team has been incredibly busy here, and this progress report is very well detailed. It's a great read, and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. We're going over things just at a high level, so check this out if you want to see things in greater detail. The first couple of things in this report we've covered in previous videos, but as a refresher here, Dolphin no longer supports Windows 7, Windows 8 or Windows 8.1, and I think even early versions of Windows 10. And this is due to a number of different reasons, so if you're trying to play Dolphin on an unsupported version of Windows, just check out a build earlier than 5.0-16393. Or just dual boot your system with Linux and use Dolphin on Linux. And for the second thing, Dolphin for Windows on ARM is now officially a thing. Yes, Dolphin previously supported Windows on ARM, but you couldn't really get the builds that easily. Now they're hosted on the main page. If you head over to the main download page on Dolphin's official website, you can see Dolphin for Windows on ARM right under the beta versions. And if you scroll down for development versions, it's also there. Now taking a look at the notable changes, the first thing here is add graphics mod infrastructure by iWub Code. I love that name, or rather I wub that name. And we can see here that the bloom has been affected in Super Mario Galaxy 2 with this new stuff. Now graphics mods do cost performance just a little bit, so if your computer is struggling to use Dolphin, using graphics mods is probably going to hurt things even more for you. And this is still in early stages of development, but it's currently available for a bunch of heavy hitting games. If you want to check these graphics mods out on a recent build of Dolphin, just go into your game properties and then hit the graphics mods tab. And if your game is supported, they should show up here. And as for Dolphin on Android, there is a bit of bad news here in regards to the graphics mods. They say the Android GUI is a bit of a pain to develop for. In fact, apparently no Dolphin developer wants to do it. The second item on the list I find very interesting. It says fix some dual core, full screen and panic alert deadlocks. Now I'm not going to go over everything that's written here, but I do want to say one thing about it. It appears that single core mode for GameCube and Wii emulation is the way to go. Dual core is incredibly unstable. So if you are running into random crashes on Dolphin, maybe just hit options here, configuration, and where it says enable dual core, just uncheck it. And speaking about performance and also Android, next up here we're still talking about Dolphin, but Dolphin on Android, just not the Google Play Store version of Dolphin. We're talking about Dolphin MMJR 2 which I thought was discontinued, but apparently not. And interestingly enough, it's not available on GitHub. Now, Dolphin MMJR2 is a fork of Dolphin. It's geared towards performance as opposed to emulation accuracy. So if your device is struggling to run GameCube or Wii games, you can always check out Dolphin MMJR or MMJR2. MMJR stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano Revamp, and MMJR2 is just adding a 2 to it. Now to make matters even more confusing, this isn't Lumens' version of Dolphin MMJR2. This is Bankai Master's version, or now Gamer64's version of Dolphin MMJR2. So there's a lot of MMJR2s floating around. Anyways, this one isn't on GitHub just yet because this is a very early build. It's a testing build. So this special testing version of MMJR2 is actually pretty interesting. Apparently they're using an older version of MMJR2 because it performed better than the official version of Dolphin by a big percent. As say they're testers. And if we take a look at the change log here, they used the older version as a base and added a bunch of stuff to it. MMU support, automatic load and saving of states, and fixed performance of Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex. Interestingly enough, there's also a very special Antutu version, like Citra MMJ. So this Antutu version tricks your phone into thinking it's running a benchmarking app, and then the phone won't throttle itself in certain cases. For example, if you have a Samsung phone with a Mali GPU, this might be the version to check out if you're struggling with GameCube emulation. If you are curious about checking out either of these versions, I'll drop a link to their Discord in the description below. Feel free to check it out, and then you can pick them up from here. 
If you have any problems whatsoever, they are looking for feedback. Next up, we're talking about Nintendo 3DS emulation on Android with Citra, just not the version of Citra that's on the Google Play Store. We are talking about Citra MMJ, the fork of Citra that's designed for performance as opposed to emulation accuracy. So as always, if the official version of Citra isn't working for you, check out a fork and see if that helps. Citra MMJ just got a brand new update. Now this new build of Citra MMJ really isn't that big. They've added in some more shader cache files which should help out performance a little bit, but we don't have more details than that. And there are three different versions of it. We've got the standard version here. We've got the Antutu version, which will trick your device into going into performance mode. Uh, maybe if you've got a Samsung with a Mali GPU or just a Mali GPU in general. And we've also got the storage access version. So if your device has scope storage and you've got an SD card, this might be the version to get. I'll leave a link to the GitHub in the description below. Feel free to check it out. Next up, we're talking about PlayStation 3 emulation on PC with RPCS3. RPCS3 is a brand new feature that I think a lot of people are going to appreciate. If you use RPCS3 and you haven't updated it in the last week or so, you might want to pick up one of the latest versions. RPCS3 now has save state. Here's a clean, fresh copy of RPCS3 that hasn't been configured at all yet. Uh, if you go to File, you can see Boot Save State right there in the menu. And to save your state, I think it's Control S. Next up here, we're talking about LaunchBox on Android. For those who are unaware, LaunchBox is an emulation front end. So it works with your ROMs and with your existing emulators. It sits in front of all that and kind of organizes it into one nice program. You open up LaunchBox and you can launch pretty much everything from there. So LaunchBox version 1.4 just released on Android and we've got a few new features here, including recently played. And in addition to the recently played category, they've also got sorting options. I think there are 23 ways to sort your games in total. There are some more things in the update, including some bug fixes and now Drastic works properly with LaunchBox. And for those wondering, LaunchBox is free for up to 100 games. It's fully featured, no problem whatsoever. Unless you've got more than 100 games and then you have to pay for it. If you are curious about LaunchBox, I'll drop a link in the description below. Last up, but most definitely not least, we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation, just not in the way you might be thinking. This is incredibly interesting, something I'm paying very, very close attention to. Linus Tech Tips put out a video today that's called Take Down This Video Nintendo, I Dare You. In this video, they show you how to hack your own Switch, pull games off of it, and emulate Switch games on the Steam Deck. It's absolutely no secret that Nintendo seems to feel pretty strongly against emulation. I mean, they've gone after YouTubers, they've taken down YouTube videos, they've even gone as far as to remove specific sections of specific videos. Not that I would know anything about it. So I'm really curious to see what happens with Linus Tech Tips here, a very big YouTube channel with a lot of resources in their, I don't want to say battle against Nintendo, but definitely poking the bear here. So I'm going to be paying attention to this one. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, haul stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts on anything we talked about today in the comments below. And we did talk about quite a bit. It was a great day for emulation. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.